Okay, well we're getting our Fairbanks crosshead set up in the horizontal here to finish out our milling ops. Just, uh, just initially getting it set up. We still got to indicate. You can see my, my setup here. So my plan was to we'll machine this right there. We're going to use the horizontal arbor. We'll probably just use this rough and mill. And I'm not, I'm not set yet. I'm just trying to make sure everything's positioned where it needs to be. But I think we can use this mill here to mill the top. And then we'll take this arbor out, you know, move the, the overarms back, and we'll just put a, a uh, the uh, facing mill right directly into the spindle and then finish cutting this side right there. Uh, once I get to that, I'll probably put a angle plate right here with a clamp just like this, just to kind of help give this a little bit of lateral support there. But we've got a nice rigid setup here. It should it should work good. We're not taking a, a whole lot of metal off of it. So what we're going to do is make sure that this face is indicated in straight. Just started doing that, so I'll set up and show you as we do that. We'll just move it on down and make sure that that machine face is directly in line with the axis of the table there. All right, I'll just crank the table by hand. Let's see about where we're at. That's going to be the low. Looks like that's the high there, so we need to bump this in around a little bit. Might have went too far there. that sucker a lot closer than I thought I did. Alright, so we're right at the 50 line, just a shade under the 50 line. Let's see how far we off now. One thousandths. See if moving at one thousandths will actually Correct it. Yeah, we're there. We're going to leave it right where it's at. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've got it clamped down nice and tight. And then I'll, uh, I'll recheck it just to make sure that we didn't move it. I always worry about these things moving whenever I pull down on these clamps. <clears throat> Hard to keep that thing right where you want it on that line. Yeah, that looks good to me. All right. Okay, guys, we're set up and ready to go. I uh, just got a touch off here, and I thought I would throw this little segment in there. I was going to show you what uh, surface speed we're going to run. So, according to what books you read, you're going to get a little bit different answer, but. A common surface speed for cast iron when machining cast iron with high speed steel is going to range anywhere from around 75 to 100 surface feet per minute. So I usually just figure either you know 80, 90, or 100 just depends on what I'm doing. The fact that this is this is a raw casting and it's got like a um, just call it a scale on the on the outside of the part there. I generally like to run it a little bit slower, but um, so. I've got the machine set at 115 RPM. So if you want to figure out what your surface speed is, you just take um, uh, 0.262 times your diameter cutter. That's uh, that's a two and a half inch cutter. So times 2.5 times your RPM 115. All right, 75.325. So just call it 75. That'll be your surface surface speed that we're running on the cutter I'll turn it on you can see so that's that's kind of conservative and I think we'll just run it right there at uh, 75 now another way that you can figure that if you want to figure if you want to figure what your rpm should be 
And remember, your RPMs are always going to be based off what you have available, so you can just get set it close. Once I figured, I usually set it one notch under that. So if we want to figure our um, what our proper RPM should be, let's take. Um, I was figuring 80. So 80, and you're going to divide that by the uh, cutter diameter. So divided by 2.5 equals 32 and then multiply that by 3.82 so times 3.82 equals 122 that that would be your rpm for 80 surface feet per minute so i've got 115 rpm and i've got 139 rpm so i just set it at 115 which means we're running at 75 surface feet per minute on the mill here all right we're going to raise it up till we touch we're on i'm right up there at it now All right, we're just touching there, so we'll back off. So I'll be able to use my four to five mic. This distance that we want to machine to is going to be 4.5, so four and a half inches. And we've got approximately 150 thousandths to come off the uh, width there. I'm at right at 4.650, so about 150. We'll just split that into three cuts just to take it conservatively. We're not in a hurry on this. We'll just take 50 and then we'll mic it and, and um, take a couple more cuts to finish it out. All right, let's start our first cut. I've got it set at three inches a minute on our feet, so that'll give us right at 2,000 feet per tooth. Uh, we didn't have any fussiness there with our first cut cast iron is usually pretty nice to work with but what i'm what i'm realizing is that this uh the finish on here you know that's a roughing mill so that's really made for roughing out metal i think the texture across here is a little bumpy for my liking we'll go ahead and take another cut with that to, to bring it down some more but i believe what i'll do is go in there with this this uh, plain mill here That'll produce a nice smooth finish across there. I just want to see where we're at for now. Should be around 4.6 or so. And we're just done, well, no, I'm sorry, uh, 621. So we got a, about an eighth of an inch to come off of it.
So I'm in the middle of swapping out arbors so that I can run this cutter because this one, this is a one inch hole, arbor hole here and I, I did have an inch and a quarter in there. So while I'm setting this up, I thought I would go ahead and talk about a couple things that people should consider. Um, some milling information that people should always abide by whenever they're setting these machines up. It's been a while since we talked about this, so I thought it'd be a good time to do that. Make sure everything is clean. So your, your tapered holder right here, this being a 50 taper, make sure that it's clean, it has no dust on it, and don't have any burrs on it either. This is a good time to use those precision ground stones. If there's a little ding or nick, just rub it until it's smooth. All right, so make sure this is clean. Make sure the spindle is absolutely clean. Just wipe it out with a rag and then wipe it with your fingers to see if you're catching anything there that you uh, missed with the rag or, or lint is in there. So we'll go ahead and get this in there first. All right, I have to tighten it up whenever the machine is on because this is a, it's a, uh, it moves on you. This is a hydraulic locked spindle, so it has to be on. All right, so I just went ahead and cleaned all of the spacers. This was a, this was like a NOS arbor that I had bought from somebody a couple years ago, and I've only used it one time, but it still had all that cosmoline or whatever rust inhibitor on there. It was all sticky and gummy. So I took it all apart, went back there to the parts washer, cleaned everything. So always make sure that all of your arbor spacers here are clean on the ends and i always keep a piece of sandpaper taped down to my lapping plate over there and in cases like this you go over there and you just lightly rub the faces to, to get rid of any trash that's on the end or if there's a nick or a burr so if you tighten these things up and you've got trash between the spacers or if there's a burr you're going to be putting a slight bow in your your arbor and it's not going to run straight and true so always make sure they're clean i'm going to go ahead and start stacking these these on there i've got Every one of these guys are uh, clean. And when I get through with this job, I'm gonna loosen this all up and I'm gonna spray this down with rust inhibitor before I put it back in my cabinet. All right, let's see. I think we'll go ahead and go on with our cutter now. I think that'll work. We can just go ahead and put one more on there. Kind of bring it out about where it's at. It is good practice to uh, keep it, keep the cutter as close to the spindle as you can. Uh, another good thing to consider there. Okay, here's the next thing. Here's the next tip. Don't tighten this until you have your arbor support supporting the bushing right there. You will bow that thing or bend it if you put a wrench on that right now. I'll put a little bit of oil on it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and crank the uh, arbor support back. All right, and then now is the time that you tighten that up. So we're gonna fire the machine up. I've got to snug the arbor up and then we'll got to tighten that up and then we'll be ready to start making our cuts. Whenever you go to tighten the flange nut up on the end, the arbor nut, use an end wrench and only tighten it by hand. Don't ever bump on it to make it tighter. That right there is all the torque you need to hold that together. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get our cutter touched off take this piece of paper very lightly hold it with my fingers I'm gonna stick it right in there when it grabs it out that means you're touching or maybe one or two thou off anyway
when I first started to cut, I was getting a lot of chatter in the part right off the bat there. And so I stopped and was getting everything adjusted to it so that it would get cut. And that's just a prime example of even a recommended surface speed isn't always going to be the ticket. You have to just adjust everything until it's, the machine is reacting and talking to you the way that, that you want it to. So we slowed it way down and I slowed the feed rate down to uh, two inches a minute. I think I was running three inches a minute and I slowed the feed rate down some. But it's doing a good job now once it got out of that vibration on this end. This little line is where I actually stopped it and uh, changed the RPM again. And we are at 36 thousandths over. So that's what we need to take is 36. Just gonna double check it a couple times here. Thirty-six thousand, about thirty-six and a half, really. So, we'll go ahead and make one more cut across there and finish it out. That'd be a good shot back handy to clean up the chip, especially for cast iron. It works great for that. Kind of satisfying to watch, isn't it? Go ahead and give it a check here with our mic and See where we finished it at. Looks like 501, one dial over. I was I was a little light on that last half dial, but it looks like we uh, were off about one thousandths total. Yep, 4.501. I don't think that's going to hurt hurt Eric though with his uh, build, so we're going to call that one finished. <laughs> 